Hello again, everyone. So uh, last time we covered, um, we, we ended up motivating functions and we covered a little bit of functions. So we said that the most basic function um, that you can possibly work with, um, if you want to define it, um, you can define a function called greeting, if we can also type it, uh, greetings like that. And uh, this function will just simply print um, hello world. Oh, print any other um, message that you would like to um, to print. So this function here, if we call it, well, we have to call the function. We okay. If we call again, I'm not sure why it's grabbing things from the buffer. So if we call this function like that, this function is is gonna do nothing except printing hello world here. Indeed. So as you remember from last time, this function um, didn't take any any parameters in this uh, uh, parameter list, which is um, the list here in the uh, in the uh, between these parentheses, and did not return any value. All this function did is basically um, executed what's inside the body of the function. So this is considered after this colon here is considered the body of the function. So anything in that body of the function is going to be executed. And this is one of the most helpless functions that you'll ever use. Um, a, good, a, a good possible um, version of this function we also um, talked about last time. Um, when you greet somebody, um, greeting, uh, greet person. Um, so here we can accept a person from the parameter list and then we take this person's name and we say hello to this person like that um, and then this parameter will be used. So this is a little bit more of a useful version um, than the first version. So the first version here, we can actually call it greeting like that. Um, so this is, this is essentially calling the first version of the function like that. And here we are going to call the second version of the function, calling the second version of the function like that. Um, so if we um, if we use our um, uh, long life friend's name Sandra and then we call it and then we this is um, Sandra here will be called and her name will be concatenated with the hello here and then we're gonna say hello Sandra but in this version here we're gonna say hello world so I'm gonna show you um, well we did not call this properly like that so we need to call it. Then the first version, as you can see, the most helpless one that doesn't do very much other than um, printing what's inside. Sometimes it's needed, but it's not, it's not a very exciting function. But this one here is, is more exciting. Um, let me show you another version of, of um, greeting a person by full name. Uh, greeting, uh, greeting by full name so this is the function name so i'm going to use the definition like that and i want to enter the first name and last name from the parameter list so i can i can say hello to this person um by by full name so here we're going to do a little bit more work so here is my greeting hello like that and now i want to greet the person by first name and then last name. But uh, if, I, if I do them um, side by side like that, they might not be printed um, in a way that will be pleasing to the, eye, to the eye. Let me, so this is how we define a function and let's call this function here. Maybe we're gonna make the definitions together listed like that. And let's greet a person by, by last name. So what is, um, what's the first name? Uh, first name Sandy, Sandy. and uh, um, what is the last person? Um, Bristow, Bristow, like that. Um, so let's see uh, what is the first version of the function gonna show me. And here, calling, I'm not sure why 
um, calling the um, third version of the function like that um, so now we're gonna see another third print statement here to the right but let's see how it's going to be printed um, so it really printed the first name and last name hello Sandra Bristow which is which is really good um, we could actually do a little bit of formatting in here like that so we can leave a space so they seem like they have equal spaces so I just added an extra space here between first and last name and I'm going to run it one more time and as you can see we're able to see this so another version that we could use of this function here um, is not to print anything but basically construct or build build full name so if I want to build this full name and I want to um, so now I'm passing the first name and last name so here's here's what I'm gonna do I'm going to create um, another variable and I'm gonna call it full name and this full name will be constructed of um, the first name and last name concatenated using the plus sign like that and I'm going to if I do this like that then this then my name is going to show up on the screen as let me let me show you um, so Sandy let me put it in a comma it will be Sandy Bristow like that um, and we don't want that so what we want is to actually have enforce a space in the middle here because the print statement it makes sure that it does the formatting for me but here, if I'm going to work with a variable, then I need to do the formatting for myself. So I'm going to make a space here, and I'm going to add these guys up. And now, instead of instead of printing this, what I need to do now is to actually return that full name. Um, so now, if I if I copy this and put it with the list of all the names, like that. Now, if I want to call this function. Um, Sandy, um, sorry, I need I need to put it in in um, as a string, and here I need to pass it as a string. If I call this function now among all the four calls, then this this is calling the fourth version of the function. And I'm really determined today to do a better typing than before. Um, all right. So if I do this right right at this moment, I'm still going to see only three greeting messages. Let me show you here. And we did not see this function here returning anything or printing anything. Well, the function did print something, uh, did not print something, but it did return something because this function here returns a full name. So... What we can so what we can what we can do is return is 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 take the return type which is um, full name. All right, I'm not sure what's going on today. So this is full name like that. So I'm going to create a variable here called full name, and now if I actually print. The full name, I'm only I'm not gonna see any greetings. I'm only gonna see that full name that I constructed. So now I'm going to see three greetings, and I'm going to see also a um, just a name without any greetings. And now look here and look at the change. So as you can see, we printed um, Sandy here. We did not print any greeting because the function did not have any greeting um, in it. If I want to do the greeting like everybody else, then I'm going to have to change uh, to print the function differently. Hello, like that. And this way, I'm going to be saying something very similar to this function here. So look here, and you're going to see that three greetings, and then the, the fourth is going to be added, and Sandy Bristow will disappear, and then there, there will be a greeting for her. There we go. Very good. So clearly, these are these are really good functions to work with. 
um, now the functions that um, that take um, parameters like th this one here and return something um, but clearly working with names and working uh, with um, variables of type string is not the only useful thing we can do with functions um, this was essentially a reminder of the work that we've done last time now I would like to show you what sort of other things that we can do with functions that has absolutely nothing with greetings so suppose now you go to a grocery store and you want to you want to buy um, an item and you want to buy five um, five things of the item so you want to uh, you want to calculate the item total for instance so here this function will accept two things will accept the item price like that as one pr pr price not prince and the second item is going to be the quantity like that so now this function is going to give me a total, right? I'm, I'm supposed to be getting back a total for the, uh, the total price. Maybe total price will be like that, uh, a better variable name. So what I need here, and I actually don't need to return this right now. I'm, I just need to take the price and I need to multiply it by the quantity like that. And this is supposed to be doing the multiplication here and store it in this total price variable and I could essentially return that price so now if I calculate a total price for an item that is $2.99 and I have I have five of those like that this is gonna give me the total price like that and um, now r remember these are numbers so I don't need to put them I, I cannot put them like that it will be a string if I don't treat it as as an integer or as a float um, so now I did not I did not have any print statements here so what I need to do to actually see the actual value is to the simplest thing is to actually print it and I'm going to have a little um, print message here saying total price like that and if I run it as you can see it gives me 14.95 um, clearly there is some formatting that needs to be done but we uh, we can I think in previous lectures we've seen some formatting all right so what else can we do suppose now um, suppose that you you go to the grocery store and there is an item on sale um, so we want to calculate the total after discount so let let's create another function total after discount so maybe maybe the item price is um, I don't know 250 so we can get rid of the fractions sorry um, no we cannot we cannot do that yet sorry I'm getting away way ahead of myself so we need the price we need the quantity like that and we also need the discount um, rate we can spell it out we can make it uh, like that so now what we need is to um, here's here's something that would be very very interesting to do I'm going to take this function here that calculates the total because why doing this remember that the whole idea of of creating functions is to do it once and then recycle it and then use it over and over and over so I already know I already know how to calculate the item total so instead of me instead of me doing instead of me getting the price right I'm gonna show you getting the price times the quantity like that why doing that and then say this is my total um, before discount well we already done this right right here is exactly the same thing that we're trying to do here so what I'm gonna do I'm basically going to call this function here like that and I am going to um, 
pass the parameters in order that the function is supposed to expect, right? And now this is gonna give me the total. So this is gonna calculate uh, item total before the discount. Calculate item total before discount. Very good. Now, what do I need to do to calculate the discount? Well, I need I need to take the, the total before discount, and then I need to multiply it by the discount rate, right? So this is actually gonna give me the discount amount. So if I do this, this is gonna give me the discount amount. So now, if I actually want to get the total after discount like that so i'm gonna take the total before discount and i don't want to be paying more so i really want to subtract the amount of discount um, from the total before and i'm gonna store them right here in the total after discount so now at this point at this point i would like to return this total after discount so now let me let me explain to you here what the, what is this line here trying to do here is actually calculating the actual discount value so it means what i'm trying to do here is if there is an item that is worth a hundred dollars right and there is a discount of 10%, uh, has a discount of 10% like that. So my um, my discount here is going to be $10. Is that good? So the actual discount value here is going to be $10. So this is exactly what I'm trying to do. How did I do that? Because I here you can multiply 100 and I'm... I'm Right now, I'm not writing code. I'm just writing the, the, the explanation of this. So you do that um, times 10%. Um, so this is going to give you 10% of 100 is $10, right? So this is exactly the step here is trying to accomplish. This step is trying to get you that $10. But now the item is, um, let me go to the next step. But now you know the item is a hundred dollars right and discount amount the discount amount is ten dollars um, therefore the the price after discount is what so if you got $100, you go to the store, you want to buy your favorite shoes, and you got 10%, which is $10, then you want to be paying $90. So this is exactly what that step is doing. So I'm going to run this. That's the truth. I'm just going to run it, and um, I'm going to use that exact example, and the quantity, I'm going to make it one. So here is the function that we need to run. So here... Um, calling the function that calculates discount like that so now suppose we have a hundred dollars um, item shoes and this uh, we're gonna buy a single pair of shoes um, and um, the discount is exactly 10% as we said, so the price after discount, and if we actually print uh, the price, oops, let me just print the price after discount. So that would be my total price I'm not sure why this annoying thing keeps showing up um, total price after discount and um, I am going to um, stop this guy I'm going to uh, comment it out 
So because we already seen it, and I the only thing that we need to see at this point is this function here, and so we we're gonna only see one print statement with a value of ninety dollars if we did everything correctly. Exactly, a value of ninety dollars. This is exactly the kind of value that we expected here, and suppose now I want to do the same to to do the same thing for a bunch of other items. So now I have a, an item of fifty dollars. Um, I bought five and my discount is, is, is um, I don't know, 5% like that. So let's see, that would be, um, oops, that would be one and that would be two. So we can see, we can see the difference between one and two. And if we run this like that, we're going to see two of them. Um, and as you can see here, um, 237 is the right answer. Um, I hope you grab your calculator and um, and I hope we well we can we can do it ourselves. Then we know that five times um, like that uh, five or fifty times five is what 250, right? And five percent of 250 is. 17, um, um, what is that? No, actually it will be 5% of, of that. Well, 10% is, is of 250 is $25, right? Um, so 25, um, 25 divided by, uh, by half of that, that will be 12.5. Um, um, so if we actually add, um, 12.5 plus, um, plus 237.5. And this is going to give me what? This is going to give me, um, 250, which is exactly the same results that we received here. So you don't really need a calculator. You can, you can just use your common sense. I'm not the, the best mathematician here, but clearly we can do some really, some basic math. Um, this is this is it. Um, and I, I, I hope you enjoyed um, this, this uh, um, video and uh, let me know if you have any questions and uh, we'll talk some more about functions next time. Thank you.